Charging Facebook, Google, and other platforms for linking to content. Originally published November 7th, 2023 by Paul O'Flaherty. This may be an unpopular stance, and it's well known that I am loath to side with Facebook, Meta, on almost anything, but publishers and countries expecting Facebook and other tech companies to pay for linking to their content need to put on their big boy pants and figure out their business and alternative traffic generation models instead of whining. Let me outline this as simply as I can. These companies are under no legal or business obligation to link to your content. Publishers are attempting to double dip on their implied value agreement with tech companies by charging for the act of linking, simply because they have been unable to figure out how to reach their audiences and provide a sustainable, monetizable value proposition for those audiences. They want the hands that feed them, not just to provide them with an audience, and generate traffic to their advertising-laden pages, but pay them for the privilege of doing so. Publishers already have control over how their content appears on services such as Facebook, Twitter, X, and search engines such as Google and Bing. They can completely customize how all of the elements of the link appear, and even block the information from going to search engines or any site they want with a tiny bit of code in their website. I'm 100% certain their content management systems support this. Don't try to tell me these publishers, many of which offer advertising services and platforms, often built on the backs of being the middleman between small businesses and the advertising services offered by Google, Meta, etc., two other companies, and are smart enough to build paywalls, aren't capable of figuring out a little user agent blocking and stopping their content from appearing on these platforms. This idea of paying to link to something is fundamentally at odds with how the internet works. If you don't believe me, then just ask Tim Berners-Lee, the inventor of the World Wide Web. Quote, Specifically, I am concerned that the code risks breaching a fundamental principle of the web by requiring payment for linking between certain content online. End quote. Way back in 2007, I was involved in a debate with a certain mapping company in Denmark where I lived. That company had sent invoices to website owners, one of which was a friend of mine, who simply linked to an ad-supported map page on their website. After a month of very public back and forth on the internet and radio, they saw the senselessness of charging website owners for sending them free traffic and ad impressions. Now let's talk about this implied value exchange between publishers and tech platforms. A Facebook link, Twitter link, Google search result or Google news link does not devalue the content as created by the publisher. A freely shared link only serves to increase the value of the content as it drives traffic to the often advertising-laden page. The only time I can think of that a link, even with an excerpt, does not provide value is if the publisher is providing no value other than the headline. And if that's the case, well, do they get to call themselves publishers or news outlets? Publishers know the value of the traffic internet platforms send them. They are also painfully aware that without these platforms, they would have very little ability to reach any audience. That's why they don't simply block these platforms from indexing their websites or use a little bit of code to make their links effectively useless on those platforms. In fact, they implement codes such as the Open Graph protocol to make sure their links are as optimized as possible to drive traffic and actively share and promote their content on these platforms themselves. Finally, let's talk about that headline link or even excerpt, which the publisher has complete control over, that appears on third-party platforms. Publishers know the value of headlines in creating traffic. There's a reason headlines exist. They are sales tools. They've adorned print media, magazines, and newspapers forever because the headline has been the hook to get people to buy the publication. Nothing has changed in this respect, except that instead of the headline appearing on a newspaper stand, the headline appears on Facebook or Google and drives traffic to the publisher's advertising-laden site. But there's more to it than that. Have you ever browsed for a book in a bookstore? Take a look at this book cover and the synopsis on the back. If you read that cover in a bookstore or online store, would you claim that you have read the book? No, I didn't think so, yet many publishers believe that the content shared in a search result entitles them to some sort of additional monetary compensation beyond the free exposure. They believe 
that what you can see in the screenshot below negates the entire value of their article. Let's ignore for a minute the complete idiocy of believing that an online publisher could exist entirely behind a paywall with no search or social exposure, no content sharing and audience building, using only paid advertising to draw traffic and entice people to pay money to get past their paywall. They know they can't. That's why they all SEO the crap out of their article excerpts and share them all over social media themselves. It's why they all have social share buttons on all of their articles. They understand the value of the free exposure and traffic. Let's ignore for a minute the potential detriment to a free internet if any website can charge for simply linking to another. Imagine if that had been the case at the beginning. We wouldn't have search engines. We would never have had a blogosphere. Most social platforms would never have existed. And even online news platforms and publishers would have been unable to link to sources and provide attribution. The internet as we know it would never have existed. Let's, however, look at the idea that a headline is worth paying for. The idea that a reader seeing a headline and excerpt is enough to require payment. When was the last time you saw a newspaper, magazine, etc., on a stand with a blank cover showing only the name of the publication and the publication date? Has a cashier ever stopped and made you pay for reading the headline on a newspaper on the rack as you walked out the door? Never? I wonder why. Maybe, just maybe, it's because the value is not in the headline, but in the actual content. And if your headline removes all value from your content, then clearly you're not doing it correctly. The headline draws readers in, gets them to click, and the content is what keeps them coming back. Such a simple concept, who would have thought it? Now excuse me while I work on my next piece about newspapers going out of business and blaming the internet, even though they never even tried to embrace the internet themselves.